Oh, hey, today we're going to be going over the Flock of Flicker 2. See if it's worth the crap. Hi, Lincoln folks, and welcome to the channel. If you're here for the first time, my name is Vinny, and this channel is all about the great outdoors, centered around hunting and fishing. So, you know, if you're in that sort of thing, you might want to check out a couple of other videos or even hit that subscribe button uh, if you're into that sort of thing. But today we have the brand new Mojo. What did it say called again? I just said it. We have the brand new Mojo Flock of Flicker 2. So many of y'all might be familiar with the Flock of Flicker, original Flock of Flicker by Mojo. Uh, knew a couple people who had it and it was fantastic the first two times they hunted with it when it actually worked. Problem was it kept getting water inside, kept getting corroded, kept dying. And then he ended up just with a really expensive paperweight. So Mojo made a few improvements, uh, assumably, to correct all of those things. And today we're gonna see how good they did, I guess. We're gonna do a little mild torture test. We're gonna see what it looks like from the air. And uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down real quick just to show you what it looks like on the inside and the outside. We got this little uh, spade looking thing. It's got a brown side and a white side. That's supposed to spin around in the air, make it flicker and flock and flicker in the air when the light hits it. And then you have the body. What's different between the old one and this one, you can see there's a more of a dome top. The body is slightly larger. It's all plastic, except for this uh, little metal thingy that holds the plastic thingy. The on and off switch is a little push button right here. Only thing I find interesting about this little push button start is they make it big and bulky says so that you can uh, turn it on and off with gloves on. But uh, when you turn it on, the thing swats your finger like you wasn't supposed to do it. I mean, just a couple centimeters to the right might have fixed that problem. Just saying. So that's what she looks like on the top. And then we're going to open her up. She's got two uh, pretty big ears on there, little tabs that you can grab twist just a little quarter turn pops it right off you can see we got an o-ring right here that uh helps seal it around the side and it just seats right here along this rim right here nothing in the bottom the bottom is really just a piece of plastic housing and you can see the insides right there three AA batteries supposed to last 30 minutes on three AA batteries if that is true it's pretty fantastic kind of like it but inside that that's where your little motor is going to be housed and this thing is on like a timer so it doesn't just constantly spin it spins a little while stops spins a little while stops and each one that i got in the package these come four by the way for 99 dollars for four of them each one of them had an individual little number right here if you can yeah see that that one says four they were labeled one through four i'm assuming that's probably different timing patterns because they're uh they're not supposed to all go off and on at the same time they're supposed to flock and flicker in different areas. So that looks like contented ducks just having a good old time, just like, <laughs> hey. So it also features a spot on the side and the bottom to hook your little Texas rig for your, your weights. Um, and another thing they added to this one that they didn't have on the first one is you have a way to wrap your Texas wig around, Texas wig, your Texas rig around the body of it like that. So you can uh, pick her up, might have it getting all tangled and stuff. A couple of things that Mojo did claim is the you know, they put this dome, I'm assuming the dome is to keep water from just sitting on the top. It can go uh, off one end or the other. Improved seal right there on the top to stop water from getting in. And this one, I believe the other one was uh, threaded, like a screw top to screw on. This one, you just have this little, I don't know, it's like a little twist lock type thing. And it gets tighter as you twist it. It sucks it down good and tight. But that'll uh, prevent you from cross threading it, which will also let water into the old one. And uh, so they fixed that. Hmm. Anything else? I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to uh, check out these things any further and leave a comment in the comments if I forgot something and uh, I'll try and answer the question or you can tell me I'm stupid because something I said was wrong if you want. It's always fun. Also, you can use these for dove hunting. You just set it on the ground. It does the same as the dove flock flickers. Now, if you only dove hunt, I would suggest getting the dove flock flickers because they're cheaper and uh, but you can't get them wet. So that's the difference. All right, so I'm gonna put up the drone and we're gonna see what this thing looks like to a duck as it's flying by. But before we do that, if you're enjoying this video at all, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more like this. And, and you're probably gonna wanna hit that subscribe button because all of those decoys in the box, I'm uh, fixing to do a video with all of those where I fly the drone, see what all of those look like from a duck's eye view.
there you go. That's what it looks like from the air. But there's a couple more things I want to try before we wrap this up. Because of all the problems they had with the last ones, I want to make sure we can put this thing through a little bit of a torture test to see if uh, water gets in it. Generally, I would recommend setting your decoys lightly in the water when they're uh, electronic or motion. But we're testing it out. They went upside down. Not exactly what I was trying to do, but that ought to give us a good test of uh, its waterproofness. Ness. Still working. Let's uh try that again. Let's submerge it for a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Soaking wet, still spinning. But I guess the real test will be to open it up and see if there's any water inside, because it would probably work with a little bit of water inside. But over time, it's definitely would corrode if the water got up in there. So try to make sure no outside water gets in. Dry as a bone. Looks to be dry to me. So I guess most of it would depend on that seal right there working, which I can't really get in there to see. So we're gonna have to assume that that's a better seal. The way this thing is designed, if they did get any water in the housing, you'd have to get a significant amount for it to even get to the batteries or the motor. Assuming that little seal holds up, which everything's got a dome on it, so the water will, you know, not just sit there, it's gonna beat off. And obviously you're not gonna throw it in upside down and just leave it there, so. Time will tell, I'll be using the crap out of these things this season. So uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you stay tuned. We'll be putting these things to the test for real, for real, when duck season starts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, make sure you check out this decoy video before you go. Okay, bye.